okay <clears throat> so as i uh, mentioned i will start with uh, ts eliot because mm, he is considered the most modern of the moderns and uh, because uh, we usually think that ts eliot is um, difficult to um, discuss difficult to manage and comment upon so the first poem that uh, we will be doing is um, the naming of cats now i hope that um, you have the text uh, with you all of you okay so um, let's go let's see what naming of the cats is uh, what i found out <coughs> actually is that um, i never thought that i would say this about uh, t s eliot but the way he has written this poem is uh, quite uh, i won't say funny but i would say uh, quite um, easy to understand and uh, the language here and this could be useful for your critical appreciation it does not seem eliotish it seems very um uh, common it it seems um not elitist it seems very um it seems if if not very but it it seems readily understandable there is no hurdle at uh, the comprehension of the uh, poem okay but you can have different uh, views on this so um the naming of cats the naming of cats is a difficult matter um it isn't just one of your holiday games um so naming of cats is difficult i mean we cannot uh, imagine uh, we cannot um um we cannot readily come up with the name of a cat even if we uh, want to why is that why do you think naming of the cat is a difficult matter and it isn't just one of our holiday games why is that any volunteers whoever has cats whoever have cats in your household they can volunteer Sampurna you have a cat right uh, Sir I have four cats You have four cats okay fine so why do you think it is difficult to name cats according to TS Eliot or according to you I named my cats. I didn't find it difficult actually, okay. because I we went like in a rhyming way, Bini, Chini, Mini, like that. So the first cat that you named Bini, uh, why did you name that cat Bini? This name suddenly popped up in my mind. So there was no method in in uh, naming a cat, right? No, it was as simple as that. Okay. but maybe uh, the english people uh, take these things quite seriously or the foreigners uh, seem to take these things uh, pretty seriously where uh, they think that naming a cat is uh, a big deal naming a cat is something that is difficult and it cannot be done um, as a part of a game um what but the thing is i guess um what has happened uh, in uh, today's world is that uh, just give me a moment so what has happened in uh, in in our world i mean it had been happening in the west for a very long time but now even in india 
people are taking their fur babies very seriously as they call them fur babies right so uh, we are very um, cautious we are very uh, we engage in this kind of a thought a lot before we name our real babies i mean how many of you would agree that uh, um, naming a baby is a difficult task and in especially today's world yes shomita you think that naming babies is difficult today Yes, sir. Even yes. Uh, naming hmm. cats is also difficult. Karun, amra jokho ne mane cat or dogger naam sadhanon jatta mane ko common hai, ta hi na mane Tommy hai, ta apne Mini o zara kum bollo Mini ra kum common naam. So jokho na amra bhabo se amader kono pet ba amader baby whatever. Jodi amra naam rakte chhe, jodi hut ke naam rakte chhe, isena thoda bhabbar bichhoi bollo, thoda unique naam rakbo. Right. Yes. And Trijit has his hand up. Yes, Trijit. Uh, yeah, it always takes time. To, to, uh, a unique name for anything. Yes. So if you want a unique name for your cat or for your real baby, then you uh, uh, you know need time and you need to do uh, some sort of research. In fact. I came across uh, a Facebook post long time ago, uh, like uh, maybe in 2013, 14, or maybe 15, which was paying people for uh, giving names to uh, companies and businesses, if not cats. But uh, you know, as in Hindi, we say "wo din dur nahi," when uh, professional cat namers and dog namers, pet namers will be. Um, employed by the uh, rich in order to uh, provide their pets with um, unique names and 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 the 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 funny thing is or the interesting thing is that T.S. Eliot was writing this poem way back in the 1940s or uh, late 1930s and back then this thing was this thing had not really uh, taken so much of uh, uh, an importance but commenting upon the changing social scenario changing social values changing uh, cultural uh, atmospheres Eliot is saying Eliot is maybe satirizing Eliot is uh, taking a swipe at people who spend a lot of time thinking about their cats or talking about their cats or um, they they are uh, divorced from real activities real life uh, situations and stuff and they uh, spend a, a considerable amount of time looking after their pets now um, though this would be a bit of a stretch but uh, if we compare the the world in which we live if we compare the if we compare the social uh, dichotomies the social differences between one strata of the society and another one class and another then we might understand that whereas one group of people one 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 class of people do not uh, get to do not get enough to eat, do not get enough opportunities, they do not have enough resources. Um, another class of people are trying to, are, 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 are more um, engaged, are uh, paying, a, uh, paying some amount of money or uh, spending some amount of energy after naming their cats, which is a frivolous um, activity. But if you go and say, this in in a cat group in Facebook that uh, naming your cat is a you know a frivolous um, activity then uh, you might uh, face some serious backlash because today uh, the cats have become the babies and babies perhaps have become like cats so 
1939, I think that was the time when the poem came out. T.S. Eliot was <coughs> predicting the future. I mean, all poets are prophets, and T.S. Eliot is perhaps one of the one of the examples who could be understood as prophets. Okay, and 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 as as all prophets do. Yes, Zufisha. Zufisha, your hand was up. Was it a mistake? Zufisha? No, sir. It's a, that's in a mistake. Please. Okay. All right. All right. No problem. So, um, I don't know if T.S. Eliot really thought about all these things or is it only me who wants to add some serious issues to this uh, poem? But I was wondering when I was reading the poem that could T.S. Eliot just mean this by writing uh, this poem? Because after all, he is T.S. Eliot. I mean, he cannot write something frivolous, right? That is another assumption. That is called um, the intentional fallacy. I'm, I'm sure you have heard of this. Uh, phrase intentional fallacy anyone heard of this phrase intentional fallacy could somebody tell me what is an intentional fallacy fallacy is a uh, wrong assumption fallacy is something that is uh, that we do not um, uh, that, that is wrong okay um, an intentional is well uh, this was th these ideas intentional fallacy uh, uh, affective fallacy these were developed by um, uh, I think uh, William Empson uh, who was trying to say that it is wrong on the part of the readers or it is wrong on the part of the critics to try to guess what the writer was trying to say because it is irrelevant and this falls under the larger category of new criticism since you are all uh, writing dissertations and term papers i think you guys uh, you know should be exposed to these um, theories and uh, their principles anyway so uh, i am uh, falling into the trap of intentional fallacy and i'm trying to guess what t.s Eliot actually wanted to say when he was writing the poem and I thought that maybe this is what he was trying to say that naming of a cat is difficult which it is not actually for uh, Sampurna but for Shomita it is um, and it is not a holiday game it is not something to be trifled with uh, a, a cat's name is a serious issue also uh, since T.S. Eliot was a nerd I hope you know the meaning of nerd. Um, you know the meaning of nerd or is it a new word for you? You can always uh, uh, talk to me in the chat box, uh, in the messages. You know the meaning of nerd, right? Yes, no? Sir, one who always uh, engages into study or something. Yes, one who is socially awkward, who is always studying, who has, who, who does not kn know how to be cool and stuff like that. Okay, so yeah, I, I think you know what a nerd is. Geek, nerd. So, uh, I, I think you also know that uh, in the Egyptian um, uh, mythology, cats were really very, cats were considered to be uh, deities. Cats were considered to be very important animals, right? You know that? Whenever I, I, I ask you that you know that, just raise your hand so I would know that yes, you know. Okay. Or if you do not raise your hand, I would understand that this is something new. This is a new information and I need to be uh, more, uh, more descriptive of what I am saying. So you know about the Egyptian mythology and the importance of cats in Egyptian mythology, right? You have seen mummy returns and all that. Yes, Bharshwati knows. Uh, Rhea knows. Yes. Okay. 
and Riddhi also knows and Shuchishmita knows. Good. Zufisha also knows. Orchok knows. So, um, so the cats were considered to be the guardians of the of the nether realm of the uh, realm of the dead and they were they they protect our realm from the uh, from the evil spirits who want to escape from the uh, from hell um, um, into our world uh, ghosts are afraid of cat um, I don't know if ghosts are afraid of uh, cats or not, but cats are fierce creatures. And uh, yes, sir. In our uh, also in our religious. In your religion. Yes. Cats are considered to be uh, sacred. Yes. Why? Um, I don't know about the deeply reason. Uh, but I just uh, know about that are uh, uh, sacred, uh, spiritually respective group of uh, cats. Hmm, that's interesting. I did not know that. Um, even in Hindu mythology, um, uh, cat is the steed of uh, Ma Shoshti. Right. And though we do hit the cats in order to uh, protect our uh, milk and uh, other items from being raided um, we 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 think it's not okay to hit a cat religiously because the cat is the bahun of ma shoshti and even zufisha approves or says that even in islam cat is considered to be a spiritual animal a kind of a animal that has kind of a spiritual connect and cats are mysterious as well. Cats are not as genial as dogs are. And there is some kind of a aura of mystery about them. They would stare at a blank space in the room for a very long uh, time. And we wonder what they are observing. And as uh, Trijit uh, mentioned that uh, uh, ghosts are afraid of them. Maybe uh, cats stare down ghosts uh, who enter into our realm. And then they run away because they do not want to be hit by a cat's paw. Okay, because of they, they are really great boxers, uh, cats are, and they can, you know, uh, hit you uh, and uh, you will bleed. So maybe even the ghosts are afraid of that. So um, this is why I think T.S. Eliot was saying that naming the cats is a difficult job. And it's not an easy task to name a cat. You may think at first I am as mad as a hatter when I tell you a cat must have three different names. So the reason as to why the cat, naming of the cats is difficult because they, they are not satisfied with just one name. There must be actually three different names and uh, uh, the audience might consider T.S. Eliot to be mad, uh, mad as a hatter as in uh, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, because even in Alice in Wonderland, we had a cat who, who would disappear. So cat in our literature, cat in our mythology, cat in our uh, society holds a very um, mysterious, important, and yet uh, lovely uh, space. We, we, we all, m many of us love cats. And I will like to uh, share... Um, one particular video with you guys i don't know if i will be successful in doing that but i'll try okay so i'll try to share my screen and i don't know if this will work Can you guys see my Facebook page? Could you could somebody unmute and tell me if my Facebook page is visible to you? Like on your yes, screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, yes. And I'll make it play. Balthazar, Bo Balthazar, P five O Balthazar. Oh, sorry. The third. <laughs> Balthazar, Bo Balthazar, Fee Fifo Balthazar. Oh. 
So, did you get the name of this cat? Anyone got the name of the cat? No? Well, actually, the name of the cat is Walter. But the real name of the cat is that this uh, uh, Walthazar by Balthazar, Fifo Foot, uh, Falthazar the third. And the cat is considered to be a wizard. And you need to name the you need to take the entire name of the cat in order to you know um, uh, summon the cat or something like that maybe you have heard of Rumpelstiltskin or something like that whose name is very difficult to pronounce and you know if you take his name then that person then that uh, magician will appear and will grant you wishes so I guess there is something to do with that also. I mean, T.S. Eliot is writing. T.S. Eliot knows a lot about these things and he is writing from that perspective. Okay. First of all, there, there's the name that the family use daily, such as Peter, Augustus, Alonzo or James, such as Victor or Jonathan, George or Bill Bailey. All of them sensible everyday names. So, one name will be something like that of a dark name that we have in our family. Like Babu, Bubu, Sona, Mona, Hona, you know, things like that. And the the cat will have a name which is which the family uses daily and this will be a sensible everyday name. Though our pet names are never sensible and we are sometimes we are ashamed of them. Uh, but uh, in this case, Peter, Augustus and stuff, uh, they are sensible names. Um, there are fancier names if you think. They sound sweeter. Some of the gentlemen, some for the dames. So, gentlemen and dames means tomcat and cat. Such as Plato, Admetus, Electra, Demeter. But all of them sensible everyday names. So, even these names are sensible, but they are sweeter. They have a sense of an academic aura to them. They have a sense of a traditional um, uh, weight around them. Plato, Admetus, Electra, Demeter, these are, these are names of uh, philosophers and writers and characters in uh, plays. So there's a lot of um, allusion going on here. Okay, So you need to identify the allusions. When you are going to write the critical appreciation, one of the figures of speech is allusion. And this poem is full of allusions, like the Mad Hatter, Peter, Augustus, James, um, then uh, Plato, uh, Admetus, Electra, Demeter, all of these. Okay, and these are like Greek names. Um, but I tell you, a cat needs a name that's particular, a name that's peculiar and more dignified. Else, how can he keep up his tail perpendicular? So, that's a habit of cats to keep their tails upright Whenever they are um, maybe running or they are coming for food or uh, they are happy, they are excited. But when they are about to fight, they uh, arc their uh, uh, tails. They do not keep their tail perpendicular when they are very angry, when they are about to fight. So they, the name must be more dignified. Otherwise, they cannot keep their tails perpendicular or spread out his whiskers or cherish his pride so the whiskers is compared it's a metaphor for the distinguished uh, gentlemen in England they have their you know um, whiskers they have their mustaches and in a movie there's a famous dialogue that um, Muche ho to Natsu Ram jaisi so uh, in England uh, once upon a time, the moustaches were a mark of uh, gentleness among uh, gentlemen, among uh, men. And uh, cats are particularly known for being very proud creatures. They have a sense of pride about them. They are always, um, they, they, they look at you as if they are looking down upon you. They are, uh, they show a kind of a superiority to uh, to 
other animals uh, and uh, even human beings. Of names of this kind, I can give you a quorum such as Munkan Strap, Quaxo, or Coricopat, such as Bombal Urina, or else Jelly Lorum. So, you know, that, that the, the name of the cat that you heard, Walthazar, by Walthazar, P4, P Pit, uh, Falthazar, and so on and so forth. Elliot is mentioning that there are some cats. I don't. I have never heard a cat whose name is uh, Bombal Urina or Jelly Lorum or Munkan Strap or something like that. But there could be cats like that. You know, uh, they have a more dignified. They have a more uh, official uh, name to uh, them, like we have. Like we have our official names, and uh, there is also a, a tendency among people to add. Um, uh, some kind of salutations in front of their names or at the back of their names like whenever you get a PhD you will never go out you will never be called without the doctor in India it is considered to be a great honor to have earned your uh, PhD degree even if you uh, have used chat GPT to write your thesis or you uh, have stolen someone else's thesis to write yours but Whatever the, re whatever the background story, if you are a PhD holder, then it, it will be considered an insult if somebody does not uh, mention that you are a doctor. I mean, not a real doctor, but a, you know, a doctorate. So I think cats also have this sense of pride about them. Okay, And that's why many people call the cats as jerks because a jerk is a person who is very proud of his lineage or who is very proud of his... Uh, PhD or who is very proud of uh, his money and stuff like that names that never belong to more than one cat of course I mean if you name your cat Munkin Strap I mean who else will name their cat Munkin Strap okay but above and beyond there's still one name left over and that is the name that you will never guess the name that no human research can discover but the cat himself knows and will never confess so besides these three kinds of names the cat has a name for itself the cat has a name for himself or herself which no research could ever discover and hence giving a hence validating the theory of mystery about cats that the cats are mysterious nobody know, knows when they go out when they come back what they, what do they do when they are not around how, wh what do what do they look at in the in the empty space um, why are they calling at the middle of the night why are they staring at you like that and so on and so forth so within that mystery one of the mysteries is the name that the cat knows that that the cat will be called by that name and the cat will be called by that name perhaps by his or her peers and not by the human beings when you, when you notice a cat in profound meditation, the reason I tell you is always the same. His mind is engaged in a rapt contemplation of the thought of the thought of the thought of his name. His ineffable, effable, effable, uh, effable, deep and inscrutable singular name. So, uh, according to T.S. Eliot, if you find a cat in rapt contemplation, if you find that a cat is um, contemplating, a cat is uh, thinking about something, then T.S. Eliot, according to T.S. Eliot, uh, we should be sure, we are sure that the cat is thinking about its name. Now, this naming is uh, actually a, a satire, an allegory, you can say, where T.S. Eliot is making fun of those people who, who think very highly of their individual names, titles actually, if not names. They are always care caring about whether somebody is soiling their name or not, whether somebody is making fun of their names or not, like Sir and Earl, Baron, uh, uh, like Doctor. So we, we take a lot of uh, pain, we take a lot of pride in our false names in the names given by people uh, who 
named us randomly. I mean, uh, what is the reason as to why somebody is named uh, something? There is no particular reason, right? There is no um, there is no logic behind a name. You cannot have you you cannot explain why your name is so because a name is randomly given a, a name is arbitrary sometimes uh, if your eyes are beautiful people would call you uh, noyona or noyon uh, if your skin is of a dark hue then you might be named kajol uh, whether you're a boy or a girl uh, sometimes um, uh, i don't know if you are uh, fair of skin people might call you gauri and so on and so forth but names like like you know um i don't know um uh, what does suchishmita means uh, suchishmita what is the meaning of this name it means that someone who has a pure smile pure just pure, pure smile yes okay so you, perhaps I mean, you were named when you were born, right? And and I believe, if like everyone else, you two were crying. Where did they see the smile? So, I mean, your parents. I, your, I yeah. don't know about that. <laughs> so you see, my name, I was named Pritesh. I don't know what exactly Sir, this. Yes. I think there is a reason behind naming anybody. But yes. the name not always perfectly justified him or her as uh, in my case, if Ria, there is a reason, of course there is a reason, but the, the name not justified me as I am thinking, even as we have read um, Subhashini by Tagore, so mm -hmm. the name has the meaning, but the name not justify the girl. So I think... Uh, no, 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 I'm not saying... I'm not saying that the name itself is meaningless. I am saying that the mm. name cannot be explained in terms of the person who is named. Mm. Right, because there is no connection. As as I pointed out with uh, Suchishmita, I did I did not know the meaning of Suchishmita, and she said that it's pure smile. And uh, usually we are named when we are born and when we are born, we are crying usually and we do not really smile because we do not have um, teeth. Uh, even if we smiled, we would look really very ugly. So naming uh, a baby uh, uh, with, uh, as having a pure smile is something arbitrary because uh, the parents know that one day she will grow up and she will have teeth and she will smile nicely and uh, every the world will be very happy to see her smile so on and so forth but the thing is that our names like our titles the things that we take pride on once upon a time the brahminical uh, uh, system of the society the brahmins used to take very much pride on the fact that they are brahmins and they can they are they they are mukhopadhyay or chakraborty or gangopadhyay or you know bandopadhyay whatever they used to take a lot of pride so I think T.S. Eliot is puncturing, T.S. Eliot is attacking with the help of um, uh, the cats. Uh, he is trying to attack the, the, the tendency among us to hold on to our titles and to give importance to our titles, to think that, you know, these titles are really very important. Okay. All right. So that's it with uh, uh, naming of the cats. Now we will move on to Marina. Give me a minute. 